You know, Isaiah 38 is a really interesting chapter. It's kind of a unique chapter in the scriptures because King Hezekiah is going to ask God for something that we've never, I don't think we have any stories in the scriptures of this kind of a thing being asked or granted. So this is a really unique thing that happens with uh, Hezekiah and God. Now, verse 1, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. So remember, this is after Assyria has taken the northern kingdom. They're kind of leaving Judah alone because they lost about 145,000 soldiers overnight to an unknown cause. And so Hezekiah is now sick. So this is down the, the timeline a little bit further. He's probably old. He's got some sickness, gout. Other problems were very common back then. Um, but he's not doing so well. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Well, how would that be if the prophet showed up to your house when you're on your deathbed and go, it's time to go home. Get your, get your affairs in order. You're going home. Verse 2, Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. So he turned away from everybody else to be kind of have a private moment, and he prayed to God. And this is verse 3, and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. So he has asked God to help him. I have done everything you've asked me to do, I have kept your commandments. I've done the best I can to do everything that you've asked me. I want to ask a favor of you, basically is what it is. And uh, please, it, it probably most likely was the favor that, that Hezekiah was asking is, let me live longer. This could be because he wanted to do some things for Israel. He wanted to help Israel out. And he saw that I could, if I could just live a little longer, I could get these things done. Uh, and it's equally as a possibility that he was afraid of death. He just didn't feel, I don't, I'm not ready to go. Give me more time. It could be something like that. But verse five, uh, oh, sorry, verse four, then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, go and say to Hezekiah, thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days. 15 years. So this is the message that he is, that, that the prophet is to give to Hezekiah. Verse 6, I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. So again, Assyria is not a huge threat, but I'm sure there's still some lingering stuff going on there. Um, this could be during the time of the siege and the challenges and things that are going on as well. Could be the in here as well. So maybe this isn't after all the siege. We, th we think of it as after the siege because it's the next chapter. Uh, but maybe these two chapters are happening at the same time. That could be a possibility. But here's the thing. This is so interesting is we don't have anybody else recorded saying, let me live a little longer. We have the stories of from the Book of Mormon of the Three Nephites. We have the story of John in the New Testament of living, being granted the ability to live forever. Um, but this is a little different. This is just him getting more time. So God is moving Hezekiah's clock back 15 years and saying, okay, I'm going to give you 15 more. So I'm going to add 15 years to your life, basically, and uh, give you more time. So a great message for us. One is, can God do everything? Pretty much. You know, even, even moving death back for us, basically. Um, but the important thing here is realize is when we keep God's commandments, when we do what God has asked of us, we can ask amazing miracles of Him to help us in our life. If we have not done what God has asked it might be a little harder to ask him for help. So doing it right just gives you that confidence and opportunity to say, I have put my faith in you. Help me. And he can help you. He will help you. It's amazing what he can do. 
Oh, sorry, I kind of freaked out for a second there. Okay. Verse uh, 7, And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which has gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, ten degrees backwards. So the sun returned ten degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. Now, could this have been, we talked about this in, in 2 Kings, uh, that, that you, you realize a sundial is telling the time based upon the position of the sun, light from the sun hitting it, and then casting a shadow, and then the little markers that go around it determine where which hour of the day it is, basically. Uh, and so to have that shadow go back is to change the angle of the light, which would be, as it says here, the sun returned 10 degrees. Uh, that's amazing to get, the, and we know the sun is stationary, it's the earth that would have moved to get that perspective based upon what we currently understand in modern world of science and, and the physics of astronomy. Um, but still, that's pretty cool to have that happen. If it happened literally, could there be other ways that that could have been represented or done? Possibly, um, but we don't have any evidence or anything that can show that that's been different. Um, so we would have to say that to have it happen based on our understanding currently, would be the earth would have rotated back around to get that degree to move um, is a possibility. Verse 9, the writing of Hezekiah king of Judah when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness. So these are, these are the things that Hezekiah wrote down when he was sick and then he recovered from his sickness. He said in verse 10, I said in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said, I shall not see the Lord, even the Lord, in the land of the living. And I shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. So this is Hezekiah preparing for the inevitable of death from his sickness. Verse 12, Mine age is departed and is removed from me as a shepherd's tent. I have cut off like a weaver, my life. He will cut me off with pinning sickness. From day even to night, wilt thou make an end of me. So another way to think about that idea of pinning sickness is a dangling thread. So when a weaver has finished weaving a piece of cloth, he rolls it up to cut it off the loom. So that's what he's talking about, basically, is God has said, your life is done. This is your, the string represents your life. It's done. Verse 13, I reckoned till morning that as a lion, so will he break all my bones. From day even to night, wilt thou make an end of me. This is talking about death will, will destroy me. Verse 14, like a crane or a swallow, so did I chatter. I did mourn as a dove. Mine eyes fell with looking upward. O Lord, I am oppressed. Undertake for me. Or as it says, the Hebrew interpretation would be, be my security, basically. Help me in this time of sickness and death. Verse 15, what shall I say? He hath both spoken unto me and himself hath done it. I shall go softly all my years in the bitterness of my soul. O Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. So wilt thou recover me and make me to live. So this is talking about being restored and uh He's helping him to come back, come back to life, not keep going towards death. Verse 17, behold, for peace or in my peace came great bitterness, but thou hast in, in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. For thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. For the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. The living the living shall praise thee, he shall praise thee, as I do this day. The father to the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me, therefore we will sing my songs to the stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. For Isaiah had said, let them take up lumps of figs 
and lay it for a plaster upon the boil, and he shall recover it. Hezekiah also has said, What is the sign that I shall go up to the house of the Lord? So these are, this is the end of this chapter is the writings of Hezekiah of what he was helping him express what he was feeling and experiencing as he was dying and preparing for death. And then he was granted 15 more years of life. How would that be? I don't, you know, I don't know about this one. I've kind of thought about this one a little bit to say, would that, I mean, it's not fun to think about the inevitability of death, that it's coming for you and, and will be something we all have to face at some point in our life. Um, I think at some point, though, we reach a point with our health and our life where we just say, you know, I'm looking forward to the next life. I'm looking forward to getting out of this mortality because it's kind of bad. My body's bad. I hurt. I ache. I've got problems. I want out. I want to move to the next life. So I think sometimes we can get to a point where we'll look forward to another life after this for moving on. Um, but I, but the thing that gets me about this story of Hezekiah is he now knows he has 15 years. Could you imagine knowing 15 years from now, I'm going to die. And then every year, every new year, it's one less year. Oh, this is the year I'm going to die this year. That's kind of ominous to have hanging over you. I'd almost rather get to that point where you just know, okay. My job is done. It's time to go in that moment rather than get to that, rather than go, I've got 14 years. I've got 13 years. I've got 12 years. I've got three, two, this is my last year. That just so weird. That's just so weird to think about with life and death. You know, that'd be so weird to have. Well, let's jump over to our next chapter as we are continuing on doing the history of the time of Isaiah.